Hey guys, this is Kaizen, and we are about to jump into today's episode, which is episode one of our new Let's Play series here in Minecraft 1.15. It's the first episode of 2020, and I am super excited for it. Uh, I just do have to mention a couple things before we get started. Number one, there are three different designs in this tutorial. Uh, tutorial Let's Play, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> and each of them will show you a great way to get XP early on. Now what I've done to make it easier for you guys is if you go to the comment section, I've pinned a comment that has a timestamp for when each of the farms starts. So if you don't want to see all the other stuff you just want to get to the farms then that is your friend the other thing to say is unfortunately my game sounds were really high in this episode not sure exactly why that is but i will fix it for the next episode i do apologize for this one having listened to it all the way through i think it's not too bad uh but yeah just thought i'd mention that and say i'm sorry for that but just a little quick intro let's get into today's episode hello everybody this is kaizen here and welcome to episode one here of our minecraft let's play series now last episode we just got a few basic things set up but today i really want to push on with enchanting and gaining experience as you can tell from the title and thumbnail of this video uh, as you'll see behind me we've got our enchantment table set up and I've put that next to the nether portal the reason I do that is because I really like to get uh, a lot of quartz early game for experience I find that it is a pretty quick and, and fast and easy way of getting a lot of experience and I highly recommend that uh, for me as well I also really like building out of quartz so it's good to get a lot of that together uh, now as we're talking about enchanting today what I want to do is just start by quickly jumping into our creative world and going through exactly what an enchantment enchanting setup requires so you know all the ingredients you need to get started with enchanting in your own minecraft world okay so what we have here is an enchantment setup that will get you level 30 enchants with the minimum amount of resources which is 15 bookshelves and one enchantment table uh, we do have some optional extras here being the anvil the crafting bench and the chest i do find these are quite useful to have in the vicinity however they are not essential for the level 30 enchants uh, so to get that, you do of course need an enchantment table, <laughs> and uh, the ingredients for that are four obsidian, two diamonds, and one book. You will of course though need a diamond pickaxe to get the obsidian, unless you get lucky and find some in a loot chest or something like that. Uh, now each bookshelf, you're looking at six planks and three books, so here's the breakdown of 15 bookshelves. You're looking there at 90 planks, uh, which is 22 and a half logs. Uh, there can be of course any logs that you like. You're also going to need 46 books. Now, that does include the one book that you need here for the enchantment table because I'm looking at using these in conjunction. Uh, so, basically, the 46 books is 46 leather, one leather per book, uh, but it's 138 paper slash cane. So, sugar cane turns into paper at a one to one ratio, so it's the same amount for each of those. So, just over two stacks of cane needed for that. Um, I mentioned it does include the enchantment table, and also extra books can be useful. And I'm going to come on to why that is in just a second. Now, if you want to add the anvil, it is 31 iron ingots to do that. Just thought I'd mention that at this stage as well again i think it's useful but it's not 100 percent necessary as far as the crafting bench goes four wood for that of course and eight for the chest that's planks uh, now let me have a little look at some enchants and i'll explain why some books might be useful okay so i'm coming to do some enchanting uh, one thing i didn't really mention in the ingredients list just over here is you will of course need lapis to complete the enchantment um, but let's say i open up this and i put in my pickaxe i want to enchant my pickaxe um, and level 30 is efficiency four but for whatever reason i don't really want that this is where having extra books can be useful because when we put the book in first of all we might get something like let's say we really want i'm breaking three we can go yep i can have that and then using the anvil we can put that onto our pickaxe and um, what we could also do is say you know what we should take the sharpness one here uh, we can always combine that later to make it into sharpness two and so forth and so on you know when you get the better books um, but for now we'll just you know keep that one to one side try again with the pickaxe this time we've got i'm breaking three that's what we wanted we'll say and we'll take that but if we had more books we could keep doing this process until we get what we want and you'll see i went from level 35 to level 34 uh, in xp so basically it's just a way of using books there and you will be able to combine them later or use them for other things but it's just a way of not using three levels per enchantment when you don't really want the thing so you know this here is sort of the minimum amount you need for level 30 enchants but you might want a few extra books just for that reason one other thing it's probably worth mentioning is uh if you're looking to enchant lots of things so lots of diamond tools and, and weapons and armor that sort of thing uh, have it all in your inventory um, this is a tip that you know old players or people who experience the game will know but some of you new guys may not and you can you know put your pickaxe and go okay i don't want that but then you know we'll put in our helmet if we had a diamond helmet on here see what we get for that and go through until you get the best enchants for each one and this really is the best way that you're going to get the best enchantments as early as you can on the game Alrighty, guys so that is you all up to speed on the enchanting process with a few little tips there that i hope you found helpful um, so now of course the question is how do we get a lot of extra XP, particularly early on in the game so that we can do as many enchantments as we want well today i'm going to show you a few different ways that you can do it a few different farms and ideas and they're all pretty simple they're all early game things you know i'm only on day two here i have done a lot of mining and resource gathering uh, but nothing you know too out of the way 
Um, now the first one, this is everything that you need to make it. Now I actually made this uh, in a tutorial video of mine, and I'm going to link that in the description if you want to see the full thing. What I'm going to do now is just go ahead and make this thing. I just wanted to show the ingredients first to show just how simple it really is to make. Uh, once it's up and running, I'll take you through a little demonstration as to how it works. So I managed to fall off and die while I was building this thing. <laughs> so this better give me some XP, hey, because uh, I'm going to need it to get it back and my items have gone absolutely everywhere. Um, it is almost done though. Um, I was just sort of falling at the final hurdle there when I was doing this. And uh, yeah, kind of going for a death and episode at the moment. So pretty good going. <laughs> I'm going to go and quickly finish this one up and then we'll have a little look at how it works in action. So I've muted my game sounds for this because it is incredibly noisy. Um, this isn't actually a problem because it is built up in the air. So when you're down on the floor there, you, you won't actually hear it. Um, it's just for the recording purposes. <laughs> it's not so great. Um, so we have cactus on this side. We have bamboo on that side. Bamboo being the fuel to smelt up cactus, as you can see here. With plenty of storage space to get a lot of this happening. And uh, there we go. We've got some green dye going into here. Um, now, I do do a full tutorial, as I say, and there'll be a link in the description. Uh, but the way this works is we can lock these furnaces here, like this, uh, by flicking that lever. So then the cactus will stay in there. Now, you see here there's just one green die, and I'm currently on level four. However, when I take out just this one die, I go all the way up to level five. It looked like I only moved a little bit, but I went a whole level in a little bit, um, which obviously is more than you'd get from just one green die because it's counting all of this as well. So hoppers now sort of remember what they've already smelted, and because of that, they're a good way of actually storing a ton of XP. Um, so yeah, not a full tutorial, but... Just a little uh, way of showing you the XP farm. Uh, now I'm going to go down to sleep because it is turning night time. And then I'm going to run... Oh, nearly died. <laughs> uh, then we're going to quickly run through some of the pros and cons of this farm. And also talk about what I think is probably going to be a better farm for the next one they're actually going to build. So there is the farm, guys. My sounds are now back to what they are always at. And you can see we cannot hear a thing because we are down here on the ground. Um, so it's, it's fine. It's running. It's doing its thing. And we can't hear it. It's only when we get up there that it gets uh, a little bit noisy. Uh, so some of the pros and cons of this one... Um, uh, so pros, you get passive uh, experience, so you can actually AFK this, um, so you know you can just leave this running for pretty much as long as you want, and uh, you can get a ton of experience from that without having to do anything, which is quite nice. Um, also, it stores the XP, so in the furnaces up there, as we mentioned before, the XP is actually stored, uh, so you know that's kind of useful, like you can have that then, a ton of it just stored up waiting for when you need it, um, whereas with a mob farm, you can only get the XP from the mobs you know, as they drop. Uh, also, it is fairly quick to build, especially once you know what you're doing. I've built a few of these now for testing purposes uh, from my tutorial and such. And uh, yeah, they're pretty pretty simple and quick to build. Um, so you know, there's a few sort of pros with that. Also, another pro kind of is the fact that it doesn't have any mobs. So if you want you know, an XP farm that doesn't use any mobs, then that's the one for you. Um, but there are some cons as well. Uh, the biggest one being there is a bit of a glitch. Now, some of you uh, have commented on my tutorial video on this saying that uh, either your cactus or bamboo grows, but the other one doesn't. And, uh, you know, you couldn't get that working. I actually had the exact same problem building this one. It's the first time I've had the problem uh, when I built it. So I don't know how common it is because I have built a few of these. But the workaround, uh, it's a bit annoying, but basically you just have to take down the side that isn't working and then rebuild it. Now, you know, it doesn't take too long to do. It's just a little bit frustrating, but definitely a con of this design. Um, also the resources. Uh, for a start, you need 27 hoppers, which is quite a lot early game, uh, to be to be fair. But uh, if you do a lot of mining, it's not so bad. But yeah, it's still, it is 27 hoppers at the end of the day. Um, also, you do need some redstone and some pistons and iron and that kind of thing. So certainly a bit of mining involved to get this one off and running. Um, the other thing is the drops you get. So unlike a mob farm where you get, you know, bones you can use on bone meal and gunpowder for your elytras and that type of thing, uh, all you're really getting out of this uh, is green dye from cactus. Um, which unless you have a massive build of uh, green stuff or, or in other ways uh, are able to use that isn't super useful. Um, so, you know, pros and cons like anything, uh, but all around not a bad AFK XP farm early game in my opinion. Um, so the next one we're going to build is a lot more complex. So I'm going to need to do a little bit of setup for this. It's actually an XP farm and this is one you definitely can do on day one. There's pretty much minimal resources needed apart from a ton of blocks. So without any further ado, I'm going to jump into that one and uh, we're going to go have a look at how we get into that and uh, we'll go through the same process. I'll show you how to build that one on cam and the pros and cons uh, of that XP system. So guys, shortly after building that XP farm up there, um, we got a raid in the village and I'm really not sure how that happened because I don't believe I had the bad omen effect. Um, but effectively, you can see my iron helmet is now gone. <laughs> I lost that. Um, I gained a few levels and I, I did get some items and things. I think I actually put them in here. 
uh, maybe so we got a totem of uh, undying somewhere I know that much we got like some emeralds and things um, but yeah oh there's a totem um, but all around uh, it took ages and it was not fun <laughs> so I did record some of that but I think I'll leave that out of this episode and just focus on the XP farms I may include that at a later episode uh, so what we're doing here you can see in my inventory here we've got a load of building blocks and a few other things we're gonna head into the never actually and I'll show you why in just a sec okay so there's our portal we've literally just come through and you'll see here I've got like a collo uh, cobblestone I should say <laughs> a pillar and there's a few of these dotted around because I've done a bit of exploring and found a place I want to live so that sort of village base that we set up that's just temporary that was just to get us started and I think it's somewhere that we can use because it's obviously it's near the spawn and there's villages there so that's cool um, but I am thinking having a bit of a pirate themed desert island type of build could be really cool um, definitely want to keep with a lot of modern builds a lot of redstone stuff and that type of thing um, but you know maybe uh, redstone sort of more hidden with a pirate theme. So let me know what you think of that. Uh, I'm going to keep running through here and get to the portal to get through and we'll have a look what it looks like when we get there. And that's where we're going to build this new XP farm because it's going to be somewhere that I'm going to need an XP farm a lot more than at spawn. So as you can see guys, I've put myself into spectator mode just to show you around this island and uh, it's pretty cool. We've got some shipwrecks around it. I think there's three or four shipwrecks around. There's a couple smaller islands just off of the main island, which you can see here. Uh, another shipwreck coming into view just now. So I think this could be a really good place to build our pirate themed base with all of our redstone builds and contraptions, all that sort of stuff involved. There is a ravine there as well, which we might be able to use. And uh, I just thought I'd show you guys around so you can see how the series is going to develop. And if you have any ideas, you can of course leave them down in the comments uh, there's our nether portals so that's obviously how we get here um, but yeah let me know your thoughts and if you're happy with the type of building i'm going to be doing and uh, the ideas i have for this series uh, but now let's jump into building that mob farm so we're going to get ourselves down here put ourselves back in survival and then build this thing Okay, so our bed and work area was over there and what I decided to do was just come to this little island here And this is where we're going to start building this thing uh, So the first thing you want to do is build really high up above all the trees and that type of thing So that's why I've got all of this scaffold in here So then we can also use that as an elevator to get up and down from the mob farm uh, You know certainly until we have an electric that sort of thing uh, So let's place all of this down and then we'll have a look at the next step Okay guys, so as you can see, this did get us pretty high up. Um, I did fall off once and die, <laughs> which is why I'm down to level 7. What I've done, I've just put a little scaffold in here, so we can actually go stand on this one. Um, and we can, this is a little bit tricky, but you can just, like that, and place a block. And once you've got that block, you're really good to go. So this is just going to be now a little platform that we're making. So the way I want to make this is along here like this. So this is going to be elevated to get up and down, and then I make a little platform here to work off. So let me just get that in place, and then we'll come on to the next stage to build this thing. Alrighty, so our workstation is now ready to go. You know, crafting bench, chest, and bed, just the usual stuff. <laughs> so we started working on the chamber just to get that in place, and we're going to head up this way. Uh, now, if I go up here, we can have a little look down inside. The reason I've got glass is so we can see into it. It's not, you know, necessary necessary but I just think it's quite a nice touch uh, it doesn't take too much as you can see either so we've come up five blocks at the minute so what we want to do is go up 22 blocks in total so when the mobs fall down uh, they will then be on one hit to kill them um, now with that being the case, you may want to make this uh, bigger if you're looking to just collect the drops and you're not worried about XP. But seeing as we're looking to get XP, I am going to make it at that height. Uh, so let me go and uh, place these blocks down so we go up to the height we need, and then I'll show you how to make the platforms, and we'll go on from there. Okay, so now that we're up here, you can see we're up the uh, 22 blocks we need to go. We need to extend off by 7 from each of these, so it'll be 8 in total. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4 five six seven and eight there we go and we're gonna do the same for each of these now, some of you may have already guessed the fact that it's uh, eight long this is going to be the water streams which will push the mobs down into here and they'll fall down to a one hit kill so i'm gonna go and make the rest of these and uh, then i'll come back and we'll go on to the next step so with the four arms now in place it brings me on to an important point make sure you light this thing up as you go because you will get mobs spawning up here and that will make things rather difficult for you uh, you can see i've placed these blocks here on each of the four corners the reason for that is what we're going to do is we're going to run these down here like this and we go all the way around each of the arms with each one of them and they need to be too high um, so basically all the way around like that to the other side and up another one again again all the way around to the side uh, so they're sort of making the little trays that the mobs are going to fall into so i'm going to go ahead and make all four of these trays show you what that looks like and uh, then go on from there with the next step so with the four trays built, you'll have something that looks a bit like this. Um, so as I say, this is where the mobs are going to get carried to the sort of killing chamber from. Uh, but the next thing that you need to do now is outline each of these really. So we're going to come out this way like this, and we're going to connect it up over there. Now you can see in the corner of my screen there, we've got a ladder. I highly
highly recommend you bring lots of ladders with you because uh, if you're doing this in survival mode as I am then it's quite handy because you're going to be up and down from that platform a fair bit uh, to get resources and that type of thing. Also it can stay there once the farm's built and just be used as a bit of a service area. Uh, so we need to do this on all four sides of course and then we can fill in the middle. Uh, you can really do any sort of design you want just ensure that whatever blocks you place in the middle bit uh, mobs can spawn on of course <laughs> otherwise you'll have a pretty rubbish farm. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and build my version of it now and uh, then we'll come back and carry on from there. Alrighty guys, so the platforms are now built, all four of them. Um, you can build it out of anything you want. Yeah, I could just build this out of like cobble and say as long as uh, mobs can spawn on it. I went for a bit of a design. Uh, it's obviously like a very simple design, but it'll still look a little bit better from the bottom. Uh, so that's what I was kind of thinking of. Um, now what we want to do is place down slabs. So basically spiders are not welcome here. Um, spiders, this like mob farm will not really work with spiders. So we want to stop them from spawning. And by placing slabs down like this, that's how you can do that. Um, so essentially what you're doing is placing one in each of these corners where your platforms can sort of start like that. Um, so that's those four in there. Uh, one in the middle, so there'll be a two gap either side of them, just like that. And then one right in the middle of the platform. So it'll look like this. So I'm going to do that to the other two sides, and then we're going to come back and get the water and trap doors in place and uh, go on from there. So for the water, probably the easiest way to do this is to place a couple of blocks down here like this and create yourself an infinite water source, uh, particularly in survival mode. And that way, you only need two buckets of water. Uh, so what we're going to do then is place one bucket down here, one bucket down here, go back and collect our water from the infinite pool, and do the same on all of the sides. And you'll see here the water comes perfectly to the edge here which will then push the mobs of course perfectly to the edge and they will fall down there so we go and fill in these channels and then we'll come back and carry on okay with the water all in place the next step is to place the trap doors so you can place them all along this side here and then all along the other side as well the whole way down these water channels um, so basically for those of you that don't know mobs will see these as being like this and think they can walk across them even when they're like this so then when they try it they will fall down into here and get carried down to their one hit kill death that we're going to give them <laughs> so uh, you need these to line each of the sides um, and once that's done i'll come back again and we'll carry on and uh, keep building the farm so this layer is pretty much done in terms of where the mobs are going to spawn and be carried away. Uh, the next thing to do is put a roof on this and uh, close in all the walls on the sides. That way mobs can still spawn even during the day. As you'll see I've started making this here and uh, basically you build up by three and that's going to be the roof slash the spawning platform on the next level. Uh, so the next level you won't be able to see. So the spawning platform on this, I you know, made it wood and stone, so there's a bit of contrast. This will be all stone, but you won't be able to see it, so it won't really matter. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the hole of this area here and make the wall and then put the second level on. Now the second level is, of course, optional. It will just give you better rates and more mob drops and that type of thing. So I had to go back to my base and pick up a few more resources. Got some uh, cobble smelting at the moment to get some more stone bricks and also get some uh, wool for carpets. So while I was here, I thought I'd have a little look at this thing and uh, see how we do. We're on level 7 exactly at the moment, which is quite nice actually, so we can sort of see how well we do. Now I turned the bamboo off because this chest was getting quite full. Um, and we see here we've got a load of cactus green uh, die. So let's just lock these a second and see how we do. So if we go from level 7 here, uh, oh, this one, all right. <laughs> I don't know how that got in there, but okay. Uh, anyway, so yeah, if we lock these now, if I take this one here, wow, that one got us to level 19. That is insane. Now, this isn't going to do much because it was just the one, I think. Yep, that's fine. Uh, this one here got us from 19 to 22. Very good, because obviously it is exponential, the, the growth. Uh, and this one here from 22 to 23. So level 7 to level 23 uh, for a farm that's just been running in the background. I'm pretty happy with that, guys. I've got to say, uh, this you know hasn't been running all that long this episode, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so I'm going to go and get the rest of the resources I need, and then we'll go back and finish off the uh, XP farm that we're building over at our new base area. So in episode zero, guys, we got our first diamond, and I put it in this little chest right here, and said I was going to name it after a patron to thank them in this episode. So we're going to do that now. We're waiting for our cobble and stuff to smelt up. Uh, so down here, we go to the anvil, and we're going to name it. Here we go. And this is to thank them for their support. It is Aradorian, like that. Now, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. I think I spelled it correctly, Aradorian. Yeah, pretty sure that's right. Um, so very, uh, like, thank you so much to you for your support. 
recently up their pledge to me, which is just incredible. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so what I've got now is your name here with the item frame, and now we've got to think of somewhere to put it. So I'm not sure where we're going to put it just yet. What I think I'll do for now is put it in here in our house, so it's like safe because <laughs> I hate for this to uh, to get blown up or something by a creeper. Um, but we might move that over to our new base soon um, and potentially put it on a certain build or something over there. So for now it's safe in there. <laughs> Thanks again to you. I'm going to get back to the rest of this episode. Uh, if for anyone else is interested in my Patreon, the information will be down in the description. Alrighty guys, so I've gone ahead and built the second level of this thing. Uh, so we're going to have two levels in total. You could have more. Uh, you could just make more of these levels that you have here and really make them as many as you like. Uh, so I have to open all of these trap doors. You see down there, obviously, that's the layer below. Um, but basically just looking at this very quickly, Quickly. We've got a two block gap again, and these are all half slabs, uh, or slabs if you want to call them, uh, going across the roof. And that'll prevent mobs from spawning on top, which is very important because that would obviously have a big effect on spawn rates. Um, I put these blocks here, we're going to get rid of them just while I was building uh, the roof and such. Um, and what we're going to do now is, as I say, open all the trap doors, get rid of all the lights, and then mobs should actually start spawning. We're pretty much ready to go. Uh, so the next thing, hopefully, for me to show you is uh, the drop rates for this and uh, what sort of experience drops we're going to get if we have this thing running. Uh, again, you do need the um, make a little bridge here. <laughs> uh, you do need these little half slabs placed in order to prevent spiders from spawning. Um, same as the arrangement below, it just looks a bit different up here because all of these blocks are the same rather than the platform being a different block. Uh, but a two gap between each of them uh, placed like this. So once you've removed all of the torches and you've got all your trap doors open, you need to get out of this thing. Uh, and if you are doing this in survival mode, what I suggest is just breaking a little area here, placing a block outside so you can fill this back up and then destroying this block, obviously making sure that you do this over an area where you're not going to fall onto the land, or you're going to fall it like that. Uh, you will then, of course, have to climb back up, but, you know, no big deal. And, of course, if you have an elytra, you can fly up. Uh, so we're going to head back up there now and take a look at this thing in action. So, guys, just been doing a little bit of testing with this, and as you can see, we're getting a few mobs spawning already. It is a little bit slow to start, and it's certainly not the most efficient mob design in the world, uh, mob farm design, I should say. Uh, but for an early game, it's not too bad. You see here, they are all here on their kills, and uh, we're going to get XP from them. And yeah, very good. Now, uh, what I was looking at here is we've got the uh, chest in, in place like this. But I think what we can do is if we place house slabs here, we can crouch underneath them. Yeah, and kind of get a better view of the mobs here, you know? That's quite a good way to go with that. Um, so yeah, it's good. Oh, can I reach it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think I just missed. Um, obviously, you want to have a sword, and if you've got looting, you get loads of drops. Um, but we're starting off, we're getting some drops. That's pretty awesome. Um, and this will be good for us for early game, for sure. Uh, now, I have one more design to show you, uh, which we're going to jump onto in just a sec. And this next design is going to get you a lot of gold, as well as a lot of XP. So quite a useful one, and you'll want to stick around to watch it, because in some ways, it is better than this one. Um, the good thing about this one is you do get all the different drops, so that's good. It's pretty easy to build early game, um, and you, know, you get a decent amount of XP from it. Um, I guess the downside is the the amount of XP isn't the best and the amount of mob drops and stuff, you know, because it's it's an early game design. Um, but that's the whole point, right, that you can build it early on in your game. Um, so let's move on now to the final design of this video, and I think you guys are going to really like this one. Okay, so what we're going to be making here, guys, is a really simple zombie pigment farm. And these are the things that you're going to need, which, as you can see, is really not that much. So let's take all this out, head over to the nether, and then I'll show you guys how to get started. Okay, so we've just come through our portal, and the first thing you're going to want is a big open area. Now, I got really lucky, actually, in that my sort of portal spawn area here is a big open area. <laughs> so that makes things pretty simple. So what I'm going to do, I think, is come up to about here, and we're going to start looking at how we want to make this thing. Um, so basically, you need to find your center point. So let's say this is going to be our center point here, and we'll just make a little hole in there. And then we'll put some ladders down there. Now, this is going to be a little escape plan. I should say, by the way, this is not my design. Uh, this was made by a YouTuber called Waffle. He's a fantastic Minecraft YouTuber. Um, I'll put a link to his video in the description. Go check him out. He's honestly, he's really good. Um, so anyway, once you've got that little area there, the next thing to do is to place a purple wall going all the way around like this. So you're going to be in the middle here like this, and then you place the cobble wall on the sides like that on the corners. Then you want some slabs, and you're going to jump, not like that, <laughs> on top of each of these corners. So we're going to place up there, up there, like so, like this, and up there. Let's get rid of that one. Uh, then you're going to make a little roof by putting the slabs on here like this. There we go. So this is going to be the little area we're going to stand in to kill the zombie pigmen um, and, uh, you know, attract them. 
Um, so basically, you have this little area here, as I said, this is a little uh, way for you to escape uh, if you get into a bit of trouble. Um, so a pretty good idea, I would say. You could also have like storage and stuff like that in here if you want to. Um, so we're going to have an area here like this, we'll light it up, and uh, we're going to make a nether portal in here as well. So basically, our nether portal will now connect up to here, rather than the one you just saw me come through. So it just means, if anything goes wrong, we can get back to the mainland uh, pretty safely. Okay, so we're back at our farm area here, and this next bit is optional. But if you want to automatically collect the drops when you kill the pigment, uh, you can build what I'm building here now. Uh, it's not too resource intensive to build, uh, you just need some magma blocks and some rail with a hopper minecart. So what we're going to do is surround this area here with the magma blocks, like this. Uh, so we place them down like this. We'll just leave ourselves a little way to get in and out for a second. Uh, and then we're going to go down underneath here, and you can see where they're running here. So this is where the rail is going to have to run around. So what I'm going to do now is just put the uh, like make the little area for the rail to go, and then I'll show you guys how to set that up. Okay, so if you are going to build this with the automatic collection system, what you want is to have the magma blocks going all the way around the outside like this, and then down underneath something that looks like this. So we've got our hopper minecart here, which will pick up any items that are dropped on those magma. So most of the drops will fall on those. There might be a couple that fall a couple blocks outside, but generally you should be okay. Um, so when I push this button, this cart will go all the way around, pick up all the drops, and then come back again. Now, we'll miss this far corner here, but you can just try not to kill mobs in that corner. Uh, basically, this is going to get, you know, probably 90% plus of all the drops. So there might be a couple of flaws, but in general, it's pretty decent, uh, especially for an early game farm like this. Uh, so that's a powered rail under there that's powered when I push the button. So it stops there and you can get all your drops at the end. Uh, then we've just got normal rails with a couple of powered rails that are powered on uh, as we go around here. Um, and as you can see, I've been placing slabs down on any blocks where pigment could spawn to prevent that from happening. Um, and then there's like this one block here, but you know, should be okay. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be okay. Um, so now we want to build our nether portal. So we're going to build that down in here. Um, and then we'll be able to get out of here at the end as well, which is awesome. Uh, so we get rid of these ones here. Uh, one, two, three, four, like that. One, two, three, and four, like that. Uh, and then a row along the top here. There we go. Uh, so now if anything goes wrong, we can get back to mainland. Um, or just, you know, when we're done, we can head back. Uh, so to use this thing to actually, you know, get started on it. You want to stand dead center in the middle here. And that's to... Hang on. I think I got it through the block there. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's just to ensure that no other person can get you. Um, you also want to be careful with gas. Uh, if they come along, you want to shoot them with your bow and arrow, your crossbow like I've got here. Because uh, it can obviously, you know, be a bit of a pain. Um, if I shoot this guy here, like this, of course, all the pigment in the air are going to come. But you want to make sure you shoot the central. Um, and you can kill them. Um, and it will take a little bit of time. Uh, this is why you want the big flat area as well, because then more people will come. And you're going to get a lot of XP from this and a bit of gold as well. So, what you do is when you to block a bit, you just go down and set a minecart around, and you will pick up all of the drops. So guys, there you have it. Several different options there for early game XP farms that will get you off to a good start with your enchanting on Minecraft 1.15. Uh, so if you like this episode, guys, please do consider liking and subscribing. It is greatly appreciated. And I do plan on making many more of these episodes, so it'd be great to have you following along on this series with me. But for this episode, that is all that I have time for today. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.